Welcome to Peter and Ruffy Sports Week here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Gordon Strachan says it's getting tougher to pick his starting 11, but he's almost there for the match against Lithuania on Saturday. Darren Fletcher, the captain of Scotland, says it's time to get Hamden rocking again. And England will be hoping for a confidence-boosting goal spree as they take on Malta tomorrow evening. That's just a few of the topics we'll be discussing tonight. Alan Ruff is with me, Peter Martin, our boot room guest. I'm delighted to say is Frank McAvenny, a man who knows what it's like to sample uh, a World Cup as well. Maca, how many World Cups did you go to? Oh, just the one. Just the one? Yeah. Uh, how many games did you play in in that World Cup? Two. <clears throat> There you are, Ruffy. That's good enough to be on the show yep. to look to the World Cup qualifiers. Of course, everybody eagerly um, anticipating this match against Lithuania. Uh, people have said four points from six. Darren Fletcher says six points from six. Um, Gordon Strachan uh, today was at his evasive best on giving anything away ahead of this game. He knows the pressure on this mm -hmm. one. It has to be a home win, Ruffy. Yeah, it has to be a, half, a home win. It needs to be... Uh for Gordon, it needs to be uh, a qualifying for the group. Uh, I think he, he knows that. I think he, he possibly will feel, as most managers do, uh, in failing last year, he needs to improve this year. So he knows that when he goes to a, a media conference that there are going to be tricky questions getting answered. I think the feel-good factor needs to be won again uh, by a lot of people. And you only can do that by winning games. Uh, and I'm sure we will win tomorrow night. And I would be happy we a draw uh, on Tuesday, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Yep, um, Maka, in the last campaign, he was probably looking and thinking, OK, I'm building this side, I've inherited one. Uh, uh, and, uh, of course, some could debate that they came close, but, you know, should have done better. Mm -hmm. um, but this time around, I think every game is going to be under close scrutiny. You know, his team selection is going to be uh, scrutinised. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, the way they play. But more importantly, and the only thing that matters, I think, to Gordon is all about results. It should be, Peter. Last last campaign was all about uh, Gordon's loyalty. He stuck with players that shouldn't have been in the team. And I think that's what cost him, to be honest with you. But this one... It's if it, if they fail, then it's you know it's all down to down to Gordon because it's you know there's a good team spirit there that he's got he's got to pick the right players. None of this if you're not playing for your club. I, I'm a great believer if you're playing and Rafael will tell you, we've played football. If you're not playing for your club, you're not match fit, Peter. So stepping up to an international level, it doesn't matter who you're playing against. They're better players than than normal. They're quicker. And if you're not match fit, they're going to run around you. So I think he's got to pick the right players, um, the right combinations. And I think we've got the team definitely tomorrow night will get a good result, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, there are no pushovers. There's none, none of that left in football now. But I think go for the six points tomorrow on Tuesday or Wednesday, Tuesday. And if we get four, fine. But I, I, I don't want to go over there and defend. And you know, you've got the cautious, of course you have. But I think we've got players that can hit them on a the break over there. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not just forgetting about about Saturday. I think we'll get the three points, Peter. We should. There'll be a, a big inquest if we don't. Are there particular players that you have in mind that you think <coughs> he remained loyal to that maybe still be here now? Well, I think. I think. Well, no, Hutton's <laughs> not playing tomorrow night, but or tomorrow. But you know, Hutton. He stuck with Hutton when he wasn't getting a game. Which, there's no doubt he's a good player, but yeah. you know, you've know you just got to... Stephen Fletcher wasn't scoring goals last year, you know, and he was playing them. And and it's all right saying that Griffiths, and we keep banging on about it, it's all right saying Griffiths is, might not be able to do the step-up. Gordon says, might not be able to do that step-up. But the fans have got to, you've got to... If the guy scored 40 goals last year, you've got to say, go and improve it. I think he'll score goals. OK. I think he'll score goals. I, I think when the ball comes in the box, Stephen Fletcher's not an out-net goal scorer for me. I think there's only one goal scorer, a natural goal scorer, and that's Griffiths at the moment. OK, um, well, before we look at your team selection... Um, uh, before we pick a team, uh, yeah. Griffiths has you, not been playing, so uh, I've not Your selection not is the team. You, the, the team you think will yeah. start, yes. or is it the team that you would prefer to start? I, I would prefer to see this team right. start. OK, just so I can yeah. uh, establish that in our heads, um, so we can pick an argument mm -hmm. about it, because yeah, obviously that's the debate. Yes. That's what everybody's doing ahead of this one. Uh, of course, Gordon <coughs> Strachan said it's getting more and more difficult uh, to pick the team because there's greater competition for... Uh, places, but he says he's nearly there uh, with regards to a starting eleven. This is what he had to say at the press conference this morning. The, the uh, areas were very strong. Some would like to be stronger. 
Um, but areas we've not got a problem was the mental strength, and um, that was proven in the last game. And uh, uh, areas we're, we're happy with is the, the, the passion and commitment. We've got that as well. Um, but I know you're talking about indiv- uh, areas, say, left back, incredible. I mean, incredible, day three this week. As good as I've ever seen, the three of them training. As good as I've ever seen um, for a position. Interesting. Um, he's talking about the left backs. Um, you know, he's got a choice here. He's got Andrew Robertson. He's got Kieran Tierney. He's got Lee Wallace as well. He's got competition in other areas yeah. now. Um, I mean, Darren Fletcher mentioned that, you know, when people are trying to talk to him about is this the strongest squad you've ever been in? And he's been very, very complimentary about it, Maka. Middle to front, there are options. And there are options that can produce something maybe a wee bit different from what we've had before. I think Snodgrass is the key. I think they missed him. You know, there's no doubt his talent. He was out injured. And, and you've got to give the boy credit for fighting back to this level. Um, he's a wonderful talent. You know, I'll take a couple of crosses for Snodgrass to go in the back post. That would do me. He can claim him as I would have claimed it as well, <laughs> saying it was meant. But listen, he's, he's a good player. They've got players there. Uh, it's down to Gordon to pick it. I think my team will be different from what Gordon. I, I pick people, I think, on form. And and if you'd asked me last year, one at the centre forward, I wouldn't have picked him, but this year he's scored three out of five games, so he's in form. OK, um, well, I think it's time we have a look at Maka's side, Ruffy. We'll have mm-hmm. a look at yours in the next uh, <coughs> part of the programme, but here's uh, Maka's starting 11. Explain it away for us, Maka. I don't need to explain. I think Forrest has been on fire. He's, he's, he's been magnificent since Brendan came in. Um, He's one of the, the best players in the country when he's on when he's on his game. So um, I don't think I really have to explain Forrest because it'll be a, it'll be a criminal shame if he doesn't play tomorrow night. Yeah. Um, because he can get players and he causes problems. Snodgrass and just in from him, I think that's a good. Fletcher will sit there, and Burke, uh, uh, you know, he's playing a wonderful league, um, and he's he's first thing he gets the ball, first thing he's in mind. Turn and run at the run at the defence. Yeah, and I think that's magnificent for her. So just play him in behind, and I played. I put Stephen Fletcher down when it's normally I wouldn't have, but Griffiths not been playing, um, and and the boy Fletcher, he scored three and five games I think, or three and four games for Sheffield Wednesday. Which is not a bad division, you know. It's still a, a very competitive division. So you've got to say, yeah, he's scoring. So <clears throat> as a striker, if you're scoring, your confidence is high. So, you know, I might, I might go into the international scene. Ruffy, um, what do you make of Marcus side? Of course, um, <clears throat> uh, ever one to overstate things, it'll be a criminal mm. shame if <laughs> <laughs> Forrest doesn't play. Yeah. No pressure, I, can, I, can see where, I can see where, I can see where he's coming from with Forrest. You know, yes. I, thought, I thought against Man City, uh, for 60 minutes, he was he was yeah. superb. Yeah. He's superb. came in, he's came back. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he can get 90 minutes. I don't know if he can. he's at that level yet, but certainly... It, he would be somebody that could attack their defence and I think that's somebody we need to get in the back. But only worry is his quality of ball into the box isn't it's always been, it's been isn't, better now. Isn't always the greatest. But I mean you've got sometimes you've got to make mm-hmm. uh, bad crosses into the box, good ones. Uh I, I, I personally, as you'll see later on, would would go for Richie. I think Richie yeah. has got a bit between his teeth and Don't I think let the team out got, the bag. No, 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 no. The only other one I would say I've got yeah, Richie. Yeah, the only one I would say yeah. would be I, I think he I've got Richie in yeah, the team. I know. I think he'll he'll go with so tried and trusted, Hanley. Yeah. So he's not I think you're uh, Hanley not, and Martin, I'm not I don't yeah. think Bear will get a, a shout tomorrow yeah. night. Mm. And uh, and on the basis of what Gordon Strachan was saying there, you know, he's obviously looking forward to the game. He's talked about the quality of the left backs. I think that's that's the big call because mm-hmm. he's very, very pro players that have played Champions League football or Premier League football. Mm-hmm. So there's your dilemma. I, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm no disrespect. I'm a big fan of Lee Wallace. <coughs> I don't yeah. think Lee Wallace <coughs> will get the nod. No. Um, so, you know, but he's talking about the fact that he's got three left backs in there. And he loves their attitude, loves the way they train. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think you could disagree. The three young boys who've got a big, big future in the game. I would like to think that it wouldn't be down to them tomorrow night whether we win this game or not. I don't think Lithuania will be, mm-hmm. will be pressing us back at any particular time. So it'll be who going forward can create 
uh, the, most tr the most trouble for them. And we'll have to wait and see that out. I certainly wouldn't agree with him. It's the best three fullbacks <laughs> he's ever seen. You know, I think he's just been, all right, you've got to talk some young, <laughs> yeah. to talk some young players up. But I think well, well, through the yeah. years at yeah. Gordon's level, he's he's seen. he has seen a few Aye. good left backs. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. I think he was just... Yeah, he's just obviously he's talking, talking to players up. managerial yeah. time problem. Yeah, but why yeah. don't we just have an argument with him? <laughs> no, good? we can't because at the end of the day, <laughs> he's not um, Danny, Mc, Danny McGrain and Sandy Jarman are the best <laughs> left backs ever so. Uh, there's yeah. no point in arguing. If you are under the age of 13 and you want to argue, this is not the programme for you because Danny mm. McGrain and Sandy Jarden, end of story. It's Aye. as simple Just, as that. Yeah. Um, OK, uh, that's when we had world-class fullbacks. Uh, no disrespect to the younger guys. <laughs> um, we'll have Ruffy's team next. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Sports Week. You can tell it's a big game coming up. Mac has picked his team in the first part of the programme uh, and we're not happy with it. We've just blown it completely out of the water, Ruffy. Um, we're getting ready to pick our team. You can give us your thoughts on Gordon Strachan's selection or indeed who you think should be in the starting 11 at Peter and Ruffy on uh, Twitter and Facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. Give us your thoughts on the starting 11 for the match against Lithuania and of course is it a must win we had the poll earlier on uh, this week and of course 95 percent of the people who put their uh, thoughts down thought that lithuania was indeed a must win game at home at hamden i'm not quite sure it's a sellout roughy but uh, certainly i think an early goal will certainly create mm -hmm. a better atmosphere uh, despite the fact that i think uh, some of the music that they're going to be playing will certainly get people in the mood for a party Yes, it certainly will. There's always a good atmosphere uh, at Hamden, you know, particularly when it, when it's full. Everybody's in good spirit before the game, but it's uh, it's up to the team, it's up to the players, you know, to to have the place really bouncing. We've all been there numerous yeah. nights when it's been fantastic. You know, when Italy were here, Spain were here, Germany were here, and we were scoring goals and the place was absolutely bouncing. I think that's what they need to do tomorrow night. I think it would be great to get a goal in the first 10 minutes and then everybody could just settle down there because I, th I think the, the players might be feeling a wee bit of pressure in this one, obviously, with the failure uh, of last year and they want to do well and uh, an early goal would just settle everybody. Yeah, we'll hear more from uh, Gordon, Sh Gordon Strachan uh, a little later in the programme. Uh, now to the captain, uh, who's on the verge of winning his 75th cap. I'm talking, of course, about uh, Darren Fletcher. He's been talking about uh, Gary McAllister uh, being his boyhood idol. McAllister was part of the Scotland training team uh, this week uh, when he passed on some little nuggets of information to uh, Fletcher, who clearly looked upon him as uh, the ideal midfielder when he was a young boy and McAllister was strutting his stuff um, not only for uh, Liverpool but of course uh, Leicester, Leeds and uh, Coventry um, Fletcher scored on his uh, debut coming on as a substitute against Lithuania all the way back in 2003 he's looking forward to this one and of course I think the key as uh, Ruffy mentioned there for Darren Fletcher is getting the crowd on side The expectation should be that we go and win the game you know our fans are, you know, expect a lot of us, and that's great. But the biggest thing is that they get behind us and support us, and 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 help us achieve that. You know, we need everyone pushing together. You know, we need Hamden rocking. You know, we did, especially home games. We need to make it a fortress and a place that teams don't like to come. And that's a combination of us going out there and and setting the tempo, and and the fans getting behind us as well. You know, that that combination really helps. And we, look, we're going to win the game as we do every game. I've said that before. We've always got a game plan to win and. It's going to be a game that we'd expected to, to win and to take the game to the opposition and we'll do that. But, you know, we do have to be cautious as well and it's a long 90 minutes. If you're looking for someone, I think, ideally sums up a captain, Ruffy, for me, Darren Fletcher, I mean, he's just a... He's just a, the, the perfect example uh, that you want to mm. set for anyone as a captain. Great off yeah. the park, you know, manners impeccable, on the park, tries to lead by example. Yeah, and that's what you want. You want somebody you can look up to, uh, and, and most good captains have that in them. You know, you look at where he's been, what he's done, and he deserves all the respect that uh, you should be giving him. And, but on the park, he's, he'll be the one that's the, pulling the strings. You know, we've always had a midfield mm. player who's been like that. He'll be dictating the pace of the game. He'll be dictating, you know, like I don't think he's going to be up and down the park, but he's actually got the ability to play 15, 20-yard passes over the top, you know, to, to bring people into the game. So I, I think he's going to be a massive player for us tomorrow night, particularly with Scott Brown not being there. Yeah, sometimes footballers can be a little blasé <coughs> about their career. 
Um, I don't think Darren Fletcher is blasé about it when you consider what he's gone through as a player. You know, he looked as if his career could have been over at one yes. point um, with that problem in his stomach. Um, comes back, uh, obviously do doesn't want to sit on the bench at yeah. Manchester United, goes and, uh, and becomes a, a regular at West Brom. Well, I'm, I'm great believer in that. People just want to sit and take money now, and, and Darren's a bit like myself. He want to play football. And, uh, and he could have stayed at Man United, Peter, because he was well in there. He could have stayed there, maybe got you know, sidetracked a little bit. But he's went to West Brom and he's done, he's done very well. He's established himself in the, mid, in the midfield. <coughs> West Brom's got youngsters around about him, the same as what Scotland had. So um, the man, Tony Pulis, has brought him in and says, look, come in and help my kids come through. And that's what he's doing. And he can do that in this campaign with Scotland. You know, he's not got the legs that he used to have his office. He's not going to get him down the park. But experience is a, is a lot when it comes. When you've got players running about you that can do that running, you know. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's good to have in the team. Yeah, I, I think he also encapsulates something that I think um, Gordon Strachan likes. Possession is king. Mm. Very really gives mm. them all away, Ruffy. Yeah. No, no, and that's, I mean, I mean, we've saw all good players, you know. I mean, I know it sounds easy to make a 10, 15-year pass, but it's making the right 10, 15-year pass and... And, and keeping the hold of possession, and that's what he'll do. That's why I think he's going to have a lot of the ball mm -hmm. tomorrow night. I think he's going to be a big, big player. It's going to be interesting to see how Gordon sets his stall out. Sometimes we have two sitting uh, mm -hmm. midfielders. I don't think that'll be the case tomorrow night. And if the boy Burke plays in a forward position, he's going to be a man short in midfield. So the tactics are going to be very important. Give us your team and explain to us what uh, is your thinking behind it. Well, it's not far away from, from Frank's team. I, I would play Martin and Hanley. I've been the two centre-halves for a while now. They, they, they can read each other. I'm not saying that Berra coming in would upset that, but uh, I think these two will play. Uh, again, Richie for me, I know what Frank's saying about Forrest. I think uh, Forrest has had a great season this year under Brendan Rodgers. But for me, Richie, I think that, I just remember that fantastic goal he scored at Hamden. You know, he's a player that can lift Everybody excites me, as does Forrest, so I, I, mm -hmm. I would just sway for, for Richie and, and Martin up front. I think with the confidence of the goals that he scored uh, in the last game, I think he might just get the shout. Frank, would you like to dismantle his I, team? I'm just wanting to know if, if that's the team you want to play or is that the team you think Gordon's going to pick? No, that's the team I would like to see. Do you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are you well, not happy with, Mark? I, I, I don't know. I think Bannon in midfield, but I, he's a good player, but I think Richie, Forrest... Snodgrass and, and Fletcher's a better four, I think. A better, you know, they, they suit each other better. Yeah. You know, I, you, the wee oompa loompa, as, as you call them. <laughs> Me Barney's a great little feet, great feet, Peter, but when you you want people to stand up and, and put their foot in and win the ball and get it. And, um, you know, I, I would just I would just put Forrest in before, before Barney, because that's the one. I like Richie, um, but Barney wouldn't be in my team. Well, um, albeit that it was Malta, and I take your point that it was 10 men eventually, mm -hmm. um, we, we did score the goals. I thought Bannon's passing and his mm -hmm. range of passing, it was absolutely superb mm -hmm. on the night. And I, and I think it's maybe given Gordon a wee bit to think about. I mean, mm -hmm. whether he's, I think he's picked his side. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's in any dilemma now. I think he's mm -hmm. he's got his side. They, they may well know. I don't know uh, Gordon Strack in style, whether he tells the team 24 hours before it, whether know. he tells them on the day. I think he'll have told the players Hell tonight, yeah. here's the starting 11, get yourself ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll have already worked through free kicks. Yeah corners, you know, the, the defence will know exactly what they have to do and, and so will everybody else in the mm -hmm. team. They'll probably been, the team that he's picked would probably be playing bounce games against the rest that are left. So yeah. I, I know, I think everybody will like, know exactly what they're going to do uh, mm -hmm. and what their, their duty is tomorrow night. I, I just find that sometimes Lithuania are very, very hard to break down, so you need a wee bit of magic, yeah. and I think Richie's got that wee bit of magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK, for what it's worth for you too, here's my team uh, that I think mm -hmm. I'd like to see uh, in the mm -hmm. game. Um, I don't think we're too far away. I've gone for Tierney, if only for the fact of the Champions League. Um, I, I think he's stepping up. I might I might bow to you know mm -hmm. the, the, the Andrew Robertson angle on it because of um, his greater experience, so I'll hold my hands up to that one. Um, I've no problem with Barry Bannon in there with Fletcher. Snodgrass, for me, is a key player, yeah. along with one other player. I think Snodgrass and Burke um, offer us something that's a wee bit different. I think mm -hmm. he's loyal. Yeah. Uh, he looks <coughs> like some Martin. 
but I think Snodgrass and Burke are mm -hmm. the key for me, Robbie. I think it offers something really that we haven't had in previous campaigns. Pace, physical mm -hmm. strength, set pieces, Snodgrass is dangerous. Yeah, yeah. yeah those Snodgrass has got quality ball into the box, you know, but you've got to get people forward uh, to get on the end of them. And uh, the big the big boy Burke looks to be <coughs> one for the future. You know, it's a big ask for him tomorrow night to come into this game. A lot of pressure on him to actually produce on the night. But I think the thing is, yeah, what we yeah yeah want him to play. You know, you know, you know I think we saw glimpses of him. Yeah, you know, just just wee glimpses yeah. that given ninety minutes and you know with the confidence behind them in that one mm -hmm. and that's why I'm saying it'd be good if we could get a, an early goal so that mm -hmm. the players like him could settle down and express himself because he's, he's been thrown into the limelight really quick. He's only had three mm -hmm. games yeah. at club level so I think, see I think the, the difference between the three of us is just Bannon and Forrest really, that's probably the two that would change for Yeah. You had Robertson at left back, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I picked Tierney. So there's another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's another difference. What age were you when you made your debut? Scotland. Twenty six. Twenty six. Okay. Don't worry. It wasn't a loaded question. What age were you? Remember? Yeah, I was twenty five. I think. Twenty five. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> well, it's an indication mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the uh, enormous pressure on Burke to perform in front of a home crowd. Uh, if he can come up with something on the day, I think uh, suddenly by the time we get to the game against Slovakia, mm -hmm. um, the hype will go through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, okay, coming up in the next part of the programme, we'll hear more from Gordon Strachan. We'll talk about the uh, Iron Brew Cup as well. We'll also look back at some of the uh, qualifiers from last night, as well as looking at boxing and golf to boot. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and Frank McAvenny is uh, with us here. Uh, it's been a busy old week for Frank, obviously hanging about with pop stars, and um, it's just a complete downer for him being with us yeah. here today. Michael, we're delighted that you're uh, still with us, first of all. No um, and over and above that, oh, thank you. <laughs> over <laughs> and above that, uh, I've got to get your thoughts, guys. If we're looking for match winners... Um, Wales continually looked to Gareth Bale yeah. last night. Um, I mean, he created he had a hand mm -hmm. in both goals yeah. uh, that Wales managed to get. If anything, we're talking about possession as king in the last part of the programme. Wales actually created their own downfall and, and they yeah. could have had three points, Maka. They could have. But, um, the big pressure's on Wales now to produce because the hype that they got from from the Euros, they're now the, the favourites and it's a, it's a new situation for, for Coleman and, and the rest of the players. Um, I, I think there's players coming through, you just look at the boy Alan, I think he's a wonderful player, Peter. I really do. Um, he's went to Stoke and he's, for a team like that, he's, he's, he's producing some great football. So you've got Bale, okay, across the ball, but it, was, it, it wasn't him that created it, I know what you're saying, but he's, he's a hand in everything. But I think you've got players that, you know, just different players that come right through the rank from young boys like Ledley, good good player, and all of a sudden they're all coming to the, fore, the forefront of, and becoming really good players. And um, I just think, as you say, they should have got three points last night. And to, to be arguing, and, and they will be arguing that they should have got three points, mm. for a team like Wales to go away and, and consider that they should have walked away with three points, so it wasn't that many years ago we were they were in the same position as Scotland. Yeah, you were just desperate for them to get something. Sometimes you get what they call a golden generation yeah. that comes through. Mm -hmm. I, I t I'll tell you one thing though, um, Marcel Collar's uh, criticism of them saying they were lucky in the European Championships is just one of those newspapers you pin up in the dressing room yeah. and say, yeah. Yeah. "On you go, lads!" And they had the perfect start and they had the perfect goal just before half time. Mm -hmm. But uh, Arnautovic displayed all the qualities that you require in a striker, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, for me, I, I don't think Wales are that far ahead of us. I think the only difference is they've got workman-like players on their side who will work as a team. The only difference between them and us is they've got Bale. We don't have a player like that just now. We, ha we don't have that. That's why we're looking at the young boy, Burke. I know it's a million miles away for being a Bale, but he could be a Bale. You know, he could be a match winner. He could be something. That's why we're all... Why can't he just be a, why can we just be a, a Burke? No, Why does everyone have to label players no, with somebody I'm else? Not, I'm not saying being a be, being yeah, a bail. I'm I think he's talking about similar what, qualities. Yeah, just do I think the boy's going to. I team. think he's going to. I think he's got. He's undoubtedly got talent. I think he's going to be a, a wonderful player. Hopefully, if we, if we let him progress, 
he'll be a he'll be a great player. But you know, I just everyone seems to stick. Mm -hmm. Not just us, but everyone no, mean, seems to I stick a name mean, onto somebody. You know, I don't mean to be good at uh, all. I'm and it's like it's, the you, contribution yeah. that Bale does for that mm -hmm. Wales team. If we could get somebody like that, and I keep repeating myself, James mm -hmm. McFadden for me mm -hmm. was the last mm -hmm. person that we relied on yeah. to dig us out of a hole in big yeah. big games, and he did it time out. Every time, mm -hmm. if we could get back to finding somebody like that, we could rely on because you've already <laughs> well, you're saying Fletcher knock, doesn't you're score goals. Was, you're you're not happy with Martin. What Martin we need is somebody. What we need is somebody to reinvent themselves and show us that we can have another really good player. Well, I'm just yeah. saying on, on form, Stephen Fletcher. I, I wouldn't pick Stephen Fletcher normally, but he's, he scored three goals in the last four games or something, and that's all I'm saying. He's on form as a striker when you're when you're scoring goals. That's your time to go in. Yeah. <clears throat> what I would say, Ruffy, is uh, don't let Maka Brow beat you out of no. your opinion. If you I think he's, he's going to no, be the no. next Bale, I think he's going to be stick Bale. With it. No, I think he's going to be Bale. Do you think anyone comes through the ranks and says, I want to be the next Ruff? I've talked to Peter that. Shelton. <laughs> 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 yeah. But how many, how many, how many oh. 30 million pound players have we had at what mm -hmm. is it, 1920? Yeah. 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 Uh, listen, I know the yeah. tag, the price tag. Is, I know. But, just, I, I just, but you had an all argument. I'm, all I'm saying is I'm just looking for something. You had somebody. an argument last year when we were arguing about Roberts coming up and you were saying he's 12, 13 million pound. You said this year he'll be up here with the young boys at Celtic. No, I'm not and he's a wonderful player. I mean, just, well, to, just to get him. <laughs> He's not good enough to get the team. Is, but you've not got Forrest in the Scotland team, so no, there you no, go. But I'm, what I'm saying is, a, a, I think he's a young boy still to produce. He got injured when Forrest took his, his place, so I mean, I, I think that's right. Forrest has kept his place. Yeah, I can't believe what we're arguing mm. over the positives of Gareth no, Bale. I'm, I'm somehow about... managed to get it to Oliver Burke. Oliver no. Burke wants to be yeah. Oliver Burke. He'll play yeah. his own way. Yes. But I can understand what you're talking about, Ruffy, with the similarities. OK, Wales 2-2. Two, two. In that group, I think it's a very, very tough group. Republic of Ireland sneaked it yeah. with a goal from Seamus Coleman. Yeah, yeah we, we saw when we played Republic Island... Uh, not many chances at either end of the park. You know, that's what kind of team they are. They're really, really difficult to score yeah. against, as we proved as well, you know, and uh, that's what their strength is. They're, they're very good defensively. They don't get turned over by anybody, and no. uh, you have to work for the win. Uh, Maka, you know um, some of the uh, English friends that you have from your time at West Ham. What's their feeling on Gareth Southgate in this four games? Mm. Jamie Redknapp has already uh, stated that he thinks the game against Scotland could make or break whether he's got any long-term possibilities of getting that England manager's yeah. job. He's a he's a modern I know Gareth, but he's a modern manager. But you know you you've got to think. Are you going? Yeah, it's international players we're talking about here, Peter. There's a lot of kids coming through at international level in England. Wonderful players. I thought Hodgson was too old. This is my opinion. I don't think Gareth Southgate is a man to lead a team like England. But I don't think he's there. He you might think have, he was too old? I, I think what do you so. think? What, I think what's, I, what's yeah, I think he did, he didn't. I think he didn't connect <clears> with <throat> the boys. Well, I don't want to say he's born the man, but he's just not got a personality, Gareth. You know, he's... And that's what you would rule him out well, on? Well, no, I, I don't... He's, he's not had the... Peter, he's, he's run the under-21s. He's not been a manager. He's not the experience. I think you've got to have experience as a manager was to run a nice... Yeah, didn't do too well. But, listen, we're talking about experience as a manager, Peter. I think somebody to take over an international job has to earn, you know, ply the trade. Yeah, as long as they're not too old. Well, I need to ask you because I'm Oh no, there's a few But I, see, I, I would put Steve Bruce in there He's done it Right, so you would give it to Steve Bruce I would give it to Steve Bruce Me personally, I would give it to Steve Bruce That's because he's a pal of yours He's not a pal of mine <laughs> Yeah, but Ruffy um... I think it depends on when he gets up in front of them How tactically aware he is And what respect he's got from the players round about Because that's what it boils down to For me as an international manager When he gets up there and starts telling you things to do You've got to Do you think you'll get the, the respect? Button. I think he will. I, I uh, think I think he seems to be quite a level-headed guy, uh, and a lot of the England players just now are young enough, you know, to to go in there and listen to what he's saying. It on the, you know, life. Right? Once you go in the party, you can pick I the players. Know, if you get know, the formation right, if you get even your tactics right, the players on the park should should do. I the, think the manager's got a personality me. as well. You know, that's what I think. Well, he's got to have a personality. Yeah, I I, I really don't. That's care my. For, that's my. I, I understand that, Mac. I don't mm. care for personality. I just I, I care for my managers who have got tactical nous, um, who can man-manage, whether they've got a personality or not, yeah. um, uh, you know, and understand the modern game and the way it's moving. I think know? it could be a Craig Levine. What? Southgate. I could, I could, 
Okay, as far as the as far as the game mm. is concerned, mm -hmm. um, Malta, <laughs> Malta is this a this is a goal spree, I think, yes. for, for well, uh, England. Well, once we got our act together, you know, defensively they will try and sit in and, and, and stop England from scoring early. They did it with us, mm -hmm. but once we got our act together, we were quite easily scored four in the second half. It could have been five or six. So I would think if England scored early on, you know, it could be six or seven. Marker, I think they scored goals. I think yeah, I think there was. I think to win games at our level, I think you need luck. And Scotland got luck against Malta and, and they capitalised on it and went and scored a lot of goals, which is great for the confidence. But I think England have got a, a wonderful squad. I really do. I think they've got a great squad. And if, listen, if you get the right manager, everyone in that group could be in trouble if they get the right manager. So I'm hoping that Southgate's more the right guy. I'll be honest with you, I don't think... They've got a great squad, Ruffy. No, I think they've, mm. I think they're the only they're the only mm. nation in the last fifty years since they won the World Cup that if they've got somebody with a special talent, they go out of their way to dismantle them. Mm. I mean, if you think of the special players that they've had, mm. and they have systematically destroyed them, and they're now on the same campaign with Wayne Rooney um, until they mm. get him out of the side. Mm -hmm. I don't see another world class star on their side. Not that I'm saying Rooney is mm. now, but there was a period where I thought he was potentially. Uh, at that level, but mm -hmm. now they want him out of the side and they'll browbeat him Peter, until he I, goes. I agree with you, certainly. Ah, they so they do dismantle themselves uh -huh. once they get to finals. Unfortunately yeah. for us, they don't dismantle themselves while they're qualifying. I think they went through the group stages last year <clears throat> undefeated. I'm not you suggesting know, that they I, won't. I think, I think I, I man think for man, they've got better players than us. Yeah. Right through the side. I think that's not what even I mean. nitpicking or not even going. Oh, right. Maybe I'm wrong there. They have got players man for man better than us. Yeah. They're young players mm -hmm. who will, and with wins behind them, will improve. I you know? am not debating that. I am not but suggesting well, for a that we have better players than them. I'm suggesting to you right now that it's not a team that sends shockwaves through. It doesn't that, that, me at the moment because of Wayne Rooney. You, I mean, yeah. you've, you've touched on him. Wayne Rooney's not a midfield player. Now, if, he, if you're not going to play him up front, he shouldn't be in the team. That's when you've got to be strong. Would you drop I'll, I'll him? Ga yeah, of course I would. Yeah. I would if you, unless you play him up front. I think he can still play up front. I think he's better than Kane. Yeah. I think he's a, he'll contribute more to England than what Kane does at the moment. Just briefly, I don't think he'll have to worry about goals. I think they'll no, hammer Malta. So. And then mm -hmm. after that, it's the mm -hmm. Sl Slovenia is the next tough one for them. Yeah. Yeah, and then the, the lords, I think it would be a big game for us. Yeah, That's okay. Massive. <coughs> Give you the thumbs up there, Ruffy. Yeah, Not you. to say I agree with I you, know. just to say shut, shut up. up. We're going yeah. to a break and we'll be back with more for these guys mm. next. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the last part of Peter and Ruffy's uh, Sports Week um, and Alan Ruff and Frank McAvenny are here with me. We've been talking uh, football, we'll maybe touch on golf and of course boxing because uh, Ricky Burns is fighting tonight and well worthy of a mention. Uh, just before that though, small matter of the Iron Brew Cup over the weekend guys and um, there's not too many games on which of course um, not too many to comment on so uh, our programme is not on tomorrow, we'll be back next Saturday with all the domestic football to look forward to north and south of the border but uh, tonight Air United against Falkirk is a tasty one in the in the Iron Brew Cup Ruffy and Crusaders no less against Livingston. Yep no I think the, the Air United one's a big one I think Falkirk have just got themselves back on track again I think anybody knows going down to Air United uh, Ian McCall they'll, they'll be in for a game so I think it'll be on the night uh, Obviously, who takes their chances gets a wee rub of the green, but I, I just got a sneaking feeling that Falkirk are uh, now beginning to hit yeah. full throttle. Yep, OK. Um, as far as the Saturday games are concerned in the Iron Brew Cup, um, it'll be a farewell to Alawa for Jack Ross. What do yeah. you make of Jack Ross taking over at your old club, St Mirren? I think it's a great a great signing. I really do. I think it's strange that he's... But I appreciate what he's saying. He's got a contract and he's, he's, he's managing Alawa for the last time. Um, rather than going to to manage St Mirren against Hibs, you know, so it's uh, is that the way it's going? But the way yeah. it's going. But listen, Jack's proven he's, he's he's a good man. He's a good young man. He's got great ideas, and I think that's what St Mirren need. They need a freshness that can bring some new ideas into it. And I like I like Alec, and he done well there. But it just wasn't happening for him. So maybe a fresh, you know, a fresh young boy coming in and, and changing things, and it might just be what. St Man need because they're in trouble at the moment. Yeah, uh, if anything, uh, Ruffy, uh, 
the game against Hibs is just a, a, a no-brainer, really. I mean, there's not going to be any um, anything to deduce from that. It's Jack coming in, getting his ideas mm-hmm. across when he takes charge. Uh, picking up on what Mike said, I think they need stability. I think they need to yeah. sit down and say, OK, mm-hmm. whatever your plans are, we're now going to sit with you for two seasons and give you a chance to build something here because I think mm-hmm. that's been St Mirren's problem. Lack of leadership at the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, unfortunately, when Alec Ray went in there, <coughs> it was desperate. You know, and, and de- desperate measures without any backing of, of any kind of money means you have to wheel and deal. And it's mm-hmm. not the ideal situation that Alec Ray would have wanted with no. him there. I think if you'd have given him a clean slate, you know, and given him some money, he probably would have done different things and brought in different players. It just remains to be seen well, where Jack Ross is in there now, whether that's what the owner does. Maybe he's seen the mistakes that the, they've made and said, look, here, here is a reasonable budget. Let's get the kind of players in that you want, and let's start getting up the league. And uh, because they are, I if he doesn't do budget. something, I don't think they've got a budget. I don't think well, he's got to be. He's got to be. He's got to be dynamo because. No, well, he's not. You know, he, he's, I don't think they've got a budget, Peter. I don't yeah. think they're going to get. They can't do nothing until January anyway. But it's one of these situations mm. that. Well, why not stick? Yeah. Well, why not stick with Alec Ray then if you've not got a budget? It wasn't happening. I think it just fresh idea. It just wasn't happening for for whatever reason. Um, but I think Jack coming in. Brings it up. He's an ex, you know, player that was well respected, well liked there. You know, I think it's a good idea. It's not not for Alec. You don't want to see anyone losing their job. But I, I think speaking to Alec, it wasn't happening for him. He knew, and it was, you know, it was. I think it, he thought he was batting his head against a brick wall. And um, so someone new ideas coming in just might. It's it's no disrespect to to Alec, but it, you know, the same players. It just might be a different idea. Shake, shake it about a bit. OK, uh, just one uh, other football point before we start to look at other sports um, on Sports Week here. Uh, give us your thoughts then on Mark Warburton mentioning the fact that he thinks the Rangers fans <laughs> need to show a bit of patience to the to the new signings. Well, I think every, every manager would like, <coughs> uh, you know, for the, the players to come in and then the fans to get right behind it. But we've already discussed when you go <laughs> to Celtic and, and Rangers that, uh, Sometimes you don't get that time. You know, you've hit, got to hit the ground running. And, and sometimes, as we've seen in the past, some players don't. So, and credit to the manager, you know, he's, he's trying to get... There's a lot of young players have come in there and uh, he's trying to just say to the fans, and, and nine times out of ten, the fans will listen. Like, this boy's not he's not hit the, the ground yet. Let's, no. let's let's give him some time. What a nonsense. And, and fans usually do. Hold on a minute. What Marcus, a Marcus started arguing at the start of the programme. You program, can't say that. How can you say to the fans, this guy's coming in, but we've got to give him a year before he... No, a year. That's not going to happen. Year. Any club, not, not, not a year. We're just well, that's what the manager that. said. No, <laughs> Take a year. A year. Nine months to a year. He says you need to give him nine months to a year. That ain't going to happen to any club, never mind no. Celtic Rangers. Uh, well, You'll get nine weeks I know, but if let you're me, lucky. Let me ask you this, Mark. This is, this, I think Rangers are slightly different. I um, don't, Peter, I, I, I don't. A I slightly think different situation this year. I think you uh-huh. need to get a sense of perspective here. You know, maybe we are guilty in the media of uh-huh. suggesting that Rangers are... Uh, you know, going to be uh, challenging Celtic. I never thought mm. for a minute this season they would be. I think sensible Rangers fans are looking and saying, this is mm-hmm. this is a progression. Mark Warburton mm-hmm. is going to build something this year. If he gets top four, um, which he's more than capable of, all well and good, he should with the budget that he's got in comparison uh, to the others. But I do not think, you know, the most sensible of fans surely doesn't think Rangers are going to win the league this season. I'm not, I, I don't think, think they're going to win. I say they were, I say they were going to end up fourth. And, and yeah. I get crucified in this show. You were all laughing saying, you said second, you said second. No, 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 Mark. Mark the, great thing, the great thing about you, you can go on other programmes and other stations <laughs> and they'll let you away with it. I said Hearts would finish second. So you need, to, you need to get a grip, yeah, yeah, by sorry, the way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Um, it's not, it's right. not that. I think, I think Rangers... More than capable of finishing top three. I think Aberdeen I, will have something to say about it. I think Hearts will finish second. I think they'll be. I think they'll be. As I said, there'll be three teams fighting for second, and, that, and then Rangers will drop off. I think that because they've not got a squad. Yeah, but I, going, I think sensible I understand, Rangers fans but, think. But, you know, but this fact, is yeah, another. Great. If they, I think, it, they, being honest, if they think top six, top four, they'll be delighted with that because it yeah. what's happened. But you can understand why he's saying to listen. Can this is the team I have at the moment. At this point, then as the money comes in. I yeah. might be able to change but, it and take it up another level. If you're saying, yeah, but if I'm, if you if the money comes in, you take up another level. So these boys are progressing. They're not going to get a game then because they're not good enough well, to listen, go buy more. A year a year ago, Ruffy and I <coughs> commentated on a Rangers game. We looked at the side and I yeah. said to him, nine of this team won't start next year. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, but amazingly, you know, last week, yeah, they have. <laughs> I think seven or eight of them did start because mm-hmm. he went back to the mm-hmm. tried and trusted from the championship, you know, mm-hmm. which has surprised me. Yeah. But he's, he's tried to yeah, add quality. Think, the one no, element okay. of it, and I, 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 I'm going to move on, but the one element of it that's really been the nightmare for him in the noose around his neck that he doesn't need at the moment is Joey Barton. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll all have to wait and see. I think it's next Monday, uh, uh-huh. it appears, and uh, it remains to be seen what's been happening in the three weeks since he hasn't been there. Uh, they'll have to make their mind up. Does he stay? Mm-hmm. Does he leave? And then the biggest... everybody will have to buy into the decision that he's made. There will be some people who will say, oh, you're off your head, or some people will, will be glad that he's back mm-hmm. in. And we'll just have to wait and see what the fallout is, is of it... this decision. I when think it's the made. fans at Rangers are now saying, where's Mr King's money? I know that, but when you, when you make a statement, Peter, people don't forget that I'm putting 30 million in. And people are saying, well, we didn't want it to paint the walls, we want it for team players on the pitch. And that's what the fans, I mean, you know, must, you know yourself, that's what they want. I, I, I don't think that's the burning issue right now. I think it will become the burning issue in uh-huh. the next two or three months if, they are not, if they're not up <laughs> to a certain uh-huh. level. Yeah. I don't think it's the burning issue right now, mm-hmm. Frank. It's, in the back, it's on the back burner waiting. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they're waiting for that one. But it's not, mm-hmm. not at the forefront at the moment. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, listen, so to debate. Rangers yes. fans at Peter and Ruffy uh, on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. A boxing match tonight. Type of thing that I love to watch. Yep. Ricky Burns against Relic. Um, you know, I, I think I, I watched Ricky Hatton suggesting this could be an upset tonight. Mm-hmm. I hope not. Uh, Ricky Burns, I think, should be celebrated as one of our mm. great boxers. Yes. Yeah, fantastic boxer. Too. Mm-hmm. There's not many boxers dropping down the weights. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and again, you know, he's a Scottish boxer who has, from the outside looking in, I don't know him that particularly well. Looks a really decent guy, mm-hmm. loves to promote the game, family guy, somebody you want to get behind. And we've, mm-hmm. we've got a fantastic tradition there. A good, great Scottish boxers, and I think we should get behind every one of them. It's mm-hmm. great to have a world champion. Yeah, and uh, as far as uh, his opponent is concerned, Mark, the only worrying aspect for me, 21 fights, mm-hmm. um, unbeaten, 19 by knockout. I know. Well, the, the thing about Ricky is that it's, it's great... He became world champion, and sometimes when you get to that, you, you fight so hard to get there, and then he went off the rails a bit, and he did not off the rails, but any thing I would have done, but yeah. you know, he just yeah. maybe the hunger was in it because he'd won the world title. But I think he's getting that back now, and I don't think there's any doubt in his ability in boxing. I think if he if he's at the top form tonight, he'll win the fight. Yeah, there's all. If he's the, not, then that's what I love about you, Maka. There's a there's a level of off the rails. There's off the rails, and then there's Maka's off well, the rails. Well, I just said that. You know, know, I, I love that. Be about honest, Maka. Be I love honest. that about you. I mean, I don't know what happened. And then there's something else. I'm not, I'm not for a minute. Then there's Ruffy's off the rails, and a big train comes in. <laughs> <about you. laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think you've summed yeah, up yeah. your man there. I don't know what has happened, what, what he's had in his tea, but Mac has been argumentative yeah, today, why not? And, and I like that about uh, him. You know, the only thing that's great about him coming on uh, our show is we won't suffer any of his shenanigans <laughs> and trying to put words know, into him. And it's for nothing. Other shows let him away with it. <laughs> and of course, um, we pay him exactly what he's worth. Delighted to have <laughs> <laughs> Delighted to have Mark <laughs> with us. He'll be back next week for charity <laughs> on the programme from Ruffy and myself. Uh, we're away to count our cheque for today and uh, split it with Maka. Thanks for watching. Good night.